like as everyone has said it's a real privilege to be here this evening and just to get your uh, little moment to say the things that you're passionate about and I think having tuned in since about 5 30 I've been really enjoying listening to people um, I think there's been a really big focus on communication and that's really interesting the whole thing around language literacy in, um, inspiring children to read inspiring them to write and then of course you know uh, flooding them with vocabulary and I just think that's just the most wonderful wonderful thread that's woven through so many of tonight's uh, conversations I just think it's wonderful we're really keen on getting people to communicate and that leads on beautifully from where Jill, Jill started us I mean I just think about what Jill was saying about the power of connection really listening I mean there's lots of things here isn't there that, that are coming through as a bit of a theme um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about connection now um, from where I am in uh, from my perspective and, and my years in school. Um, if I show you the first picture, I'm hoping you can see that. Let me go from current slide, uh, make sure I've started the show properly. Then you get a full screen. Go on then, there we go. Um, so that, that's kind of like what my career looks like. <laughs> And at the moment, I'm somewhere on one of those little hills. I'm not done yet, um, but I've come a long way. So I'd say I started out back in, I graduated in 97 at Goldsmiths and uh, have since then been a primary school teacher primarily, a head teacher, then um, a consultant kind of head teacher. So doing quite a lot of interims, a bit like uh, Patrick going in and just steadying the ship. Uh, sometimes when there's a bit of crisis occurring. So I've done that in about seven schools now. Then I've done some work as PGC tutor and uh, two stints as like an interim director of education in two big mats. So I've had quite an interesting uh, career path so far. Sometimes I find some of the um, directives and uh, uh, yeah, rules, shall we say, a little bit challenging. So I quite like being independent and I think that's a really nice place to be. But let's crack on with the things I want to talk about, she says, just keep an eye on that timer. Um, uh, I want to just mention, let's move on to the next slide, she says, uh, what I've learned from all the experiences I've had in my 20 something years in school and really that it's we're, we're all about influencing people and uh, that's the key to this i think that when you're going into work with a group of people it can be teachers or students we're always looking for that learning opportunity and i think that we have come a long way from considering leadership be something authoritarian to it becoming something quite influential and i want to keep that and this is a, 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 as a key message from this uh, uh, presentation is about the influence that we're able to have on people. And so how do we make sure that we're really good at influencing people? Well, uh, as John West Burnham said many, many years ago, a few people will remember him. Um, Self-directed learning is a key part of this. And it was even just this morning when Ross McGill, our teacher toolkit friend, uh, mentioned a, a book he was reading on uh, brain development. And he was saying this is his CPD. And I thought, yeah, absolutely. We're all engaged in self-directed learning. So for me, my self-directed learning and the thing I'm most uh, excited about and have been for about 20 years is emotional intelligence. Um, so that's just an area that I've chosen to really study quite a lot. And in particular, I want to talk about making uh, conscious and unconscious actions really explicit in our lives, um, having some awareness and looking at our beliefs and intentions. And a lot of that is to do with how we communicate with people. So a lot of the things we've been hearing about this evening already. So just uh, as a starter for 10, have a look at those questions. Start thinking about what you believe as a way of understanding who you are and who you are in an emotionally intelligent sense. So we think about that because actually, as we understand who we are, we start to develop a self-awareness. That's a, 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 an awareness, a consciousness of who we are, how we are and how we interact with other people. So self-awareness is one aspect of that, how you manage that. And then your social awareness, how you interact with other people. Why is that important? Because we're paid to do that top third of the iceberg. That's the skills that we've been paid to do. But all that stuff underneath is stuff that comes out in our day to day practice, in our day to day living. It's just who we are. And what we need to be able to do is to be comfortable with who we are. One thing you can do is go and have a look at your personality type. I think I've put on here this website, 16personalities.com. So I'd highly recommend as your first step of self-awareness, taking yourself off to that website. It's for free and you'll find out a little bit more about who you are. Then it might make you think a little bit about how other people are and why people are different to you and why they operate differently. Um, one of the things that Patrick said in his presentation was about having bespoke and personal development. And I think this is all, all what it's about. It's about being able to explore each other's unique beliefs and uh, and standpoint. Here's a really nice infographic from Barclays. 
we've got here uh, the for the first time in history we've got five generations in the workplace that's never happened before and all of those people uh, have different value sets and I think this is all about how do we influence people there's my timer we need to make sure that we're able to uh, cancel that go away go away go away we need to make sure that we're able to tap into um, you're going to carry on Sorry, we're going to need to make sure we're able to tap into what people's value sets are. So I'm talking particularly here about people's values very briefly. I'm not going to go on for much longer. This is another really useful takeaway. I think if you can Google this one, the Hay Group were the people who gave us the in inventory of leadership styles. But they've also done a really fascinating uh, paper on leadership 2030, all about strategic thinking, deep integrity, intellectual openness. Um, and as you'll see in the second paragraph, influence without authority or positional power. So we're talking about a different way of being, interacting, and I think all of that is about being conscious. Very simple. And just to finish on this one, I think, uh, I've done quite a lot of reading and research recently on millennials and their value sets. And uh, uh, I think the key thing here is just to be mindful of the fact that um, they want authentic leadership. Uh, so I just think there's a something in all of that. So that's my little uh, five minutes of, of interest where I am at the moment in my career and, and what I'm thinking about. Thank you, Brilliant. Jack. Thank you very much, Jack.